Okay, so we've been talking all about light absorption, so we're going from the ground state to excited states, but when things glow, it's when we're going from excited states back down to the ground state, and then we're emitting a photon. Um, so a key points for this is this has the same selection rules, same transition moment integral as absorption spectroscopy, so uh, our transition should be the same. Oops, transition, okay. Moment integral, oops, as absorption. Okay, so let's talk about what we'll typically see. So, for example, if we go, so here again is our ground state, and then we have all our vibrational levels. And then, like I said, at low temperatures, we'll start off with this lowest vibrational level. And then last time we talked about how uh, we have our excited state, which might have some you know, nuclear displacement, which is why it's a little bit over here. Again, this x-axis is nuclear displacement, y-axis is energy, so this is our excited state. Ground state. So when we absorb light, we're going from nu equals zero to our excited state levels. So we'll absorb a photon, and again, we can go to kind of nu equals zero, we can go to nu equals one, we can go to all of these. These are absorption levels. And then so, if we can also go to the highest one as well. I'm missing one, but that's, the, that's that. So this is absorption. Absorption. So we've ex excited to this higher level. So one key point is that relaxation back down to this low vibrational level, this nu equals zero, is really, really fast comparatively. So we excite, it goes to excited state, and then so without emitting a photon, we're going to relax thermally down, down to nu equals zero. So this is some sort of relaxation. So no photon. And then, so we always then, when we do luminescence, we always go from this nu equals zero vibrational level back down to the ground state. So I'll draw our emission in pink. And then so, just like absorption, we could go from nu equals zero up to any of these vibrational levels. We can go from, in emission, we can go from this one down to our different vibrational levels also. So this is gonna be our emission. And then so uh, this is why then that we have, we could also get vibronic structure in luminescence. Sometimes. And so this vibronic coupling, just like with absorption, vibronic coupling could also lead to broadening of your luminescence band um, if you don't resolve the actual fine structure, but you'll still see different energy levels that it can emit to. Um, yes, another complication added broadening could be happening if we're exciting from the higher vibrational levels of the ground state, if we're, for example, at high temperature. And then, so that could then, that'll lead to ex excitation, but then it all relax down to nu equals zero, and then come back down. So actually, I take that back. There shouldn't be broadening due to the temperature. Okay, so that's luminescence. Um, so what we'll end up seeing is, here is kind of, let's say, nanometers. Oops, nanometers, so this is going up. And then let's say, it, so energy will be going down, right? So this side is lower energy, or so this, this side is higher energy, and this side is lower energy. So if we have our absorbance band here, so here's our absorbance, which has a certain shape based on the factors that we talked about, and then so, what you see here is that um, as we absorb, so we can absorb this high photon, or this high energy photon, but it relaxes down, so we lose energy there. So what happens is our emission, which is this air, these pink arrows, are always gonna be lower energy than absorbance. So therefore our emission So this is lower energy. because we lost energy through this relaxation. 
And then so this is what's called the Stokes shift, which is how much energy is lost in between absorption and emission. Stokes shift. OK. Um, yes. So this is just kind of general scheme of luminescence. You might have heard about the difference between fluorescence and phosphorescence. So we'll redraw this kind of as what's called the Jablonski diagram. So in the Jablonski diagram, instead of using like, these curves, we just use uh, flat lines. The curves are assumed. So if we say that this is our ground state, so if we have a singlet ground state, for example, here is my S sub 0. So here's singlet, and then this is our ground state. And then so here are all our kind of vibrational levels. So I'll call this 0, 1, 2. Again, if we do low temperature spectroscopy, we'll all be we'll all be at the zero state. Okay, and then so we have spin allowed transitions to singlet excited states because our ground state is a singlet. So, for example, we have multiple singlet terms that could go to. So, here let's say here's our first singlet excited state. So spin allowed going up, and then here's our let's say S two spin allowed going there. So again, we could absorb light. So we could go all the way up here. Let's say we go there. We could also go here. And again, we could have thermal relaxation. Uh, so here, it can relax down. It goes, to, it goes to the new equals 0, 1, 2. And again, we're also, um, when we do fluorescence, a higher single excited state could also do a non-radiative relaxation down to the lowest singlet excited state. And then so from here, what we'll see for emission spectroscopy is we'll then get here. So we'll see these bands. So this is exactly what I've drawn over here. So this is fluorescence. So it's spin allowed. So spin is conserved. And so because we're going from singlet to singlet, again, this is allowed because we have the same transition moment dipole integral. Um, so typically, these, uh, these can be pretty fast. The time scale that we're talking about here would be 10 to the minus 6 to 10 to the minus 10 seconds. So pretty fast. This is fluorescence. Um, and again, so here are kind of bullet points. And we go from the lowest uh, excited state of that same spin. Go from, so we don't fluoresce really from S2. That's called Kasha's rule, but we don't need to know that. OK. Um, so then there's a phenomenon called phosphorescence. So we've been talking about, we've been talking about singlet ground states, so we've been talking about singlet excited states, that's been allowed absorption. But there could also be, for example, if we had a triplet excited state. So triplet excited state. And again, we have the same vibrational levels. So what can happen is you have what's called the intersystem crossing. So we can go from our single excited state, and we can go over to so intersystem crossing. We're going from singlet to triplet. So there's going to be a spin flip that's happening. Um, and then from there, then we could, again, relax down to the lowest vibrational level. And then we could release a photon. So this is called phosphorescence, where we're going from a different spin state, a different spin excited state, back to the ground state. We're going from triplet to singlet. And it requires inner system crossing. Phosphorescence. OK. And then so because we're going from triplet to singlet, so this is kind of different spin. And so as a result, these, um, the lifetimes of these excited states are going to be actually quite long. So uh, it's going to decay on the order of 10 to the minus 6 to 10 to the minus 3 seconds. So you can see it's, it's much, much slower than fluorescence. So because we're sp spin forbidden. Um, yeah. So uh, you can tell these by doing these ultra fast experiments where you could, or I guess just like time resolved experiments. So where you excite, and then you kind of measure the photons as they decay, and then the time scale of that decay of that excited state, like how, how, how fast we're emitting the photons, basically, can tell you if it's fluorescence versus phosphorescence. 
And then so we'll then get to our different uh, emission bands. So that's kind of really, really basic luminescence spectroscopy. We're not going to go into any further detail. <laughs>